from Hollywood. Lorene Tuttle in The Unexpected. The Unexpected. The Unexpected. Life is filled with the unexpected. Romantic, tragic, and mysterious endings to our most ordinary actions. Dreams come true, or dreams are shattered by sudden twists of fate in The Unexpected. And now, Lorene Tuttle, outstanding radio and screen star in The Mink Coat, a drama of The Unexpected. to say that, Mr. Flynn. I don't care what kind of a person you think I am. You shouldn't say so. Oh, but Lorna, please. Well, how would you like it if your boss called you into his office and said, Miss Rogers, you're a thief. I asked you, how would you like it? But my dear Lorna, you are a thief. The records are right here. Records, records. I don't care anything about your old records. All I want is my mink coat. Your mink coat? Certainly. What do you think I'm talking about? It's like I'm accusing people unjustly when it's really all your own fault anyway. <sighs> Now, see here, Lorna. What's this all about? Why don't you just explain exactly what happened? Well, it was about a year ago. I just started to work for Flint and Company. That's you. And I must say, things in this office weren't a bit what I expected. Well, now, in the movies, the boss would have... Oh, never mind. Well, anyway, I was walking back from lunch, and I saw it in the window. The most wonderful mink coat. I could imagine wearing it. Maybe you don't know what a mink coat does for a woman's ego, but you, you feel all warm and expensive. Yeah. And I wanted to feel all warm and expensive. So I went into the shop, and guess what I found out? What? $4,875 plus tax. Well, now, where can a girl like me get $4,875 plus tax? But I wanted that coat. I wanted it so badly. I just, well, I just had to have it. And then I remembered, in the movies, what does a boss always give the girl who works in his office? Right, a mink coat. So I let you take me home that evening, and, well, you remember what happened. It's the next apartment, Mr. Flynn. Oh, um, would you like to come upstairs for a nightcap? I don't drink. You don't drink? Ulcers. But, Mr. Flint, the boss is always supposed to come upstairs for a nightcap. Always? Certainly. Now, my apartment's on the third floor. I'll go in first, and then you come up in a few minutes. But, but why? Because that's the way it's always done. Really, Mr. Flint, I don't think you're even trying. Oh. I'm sorry, Lorna. I I'll try. Well, that's more like it. I I'll see you upstairs, Mr. Flint. <laughs> Mr. Flint, how nice to see you again. Lorna, isn't it a little too late? And silly boy, it's never too late. Come in. What's that peculiar smell, Lorna? Is the place on fire? Of course not. It's the perfume candles. Oh. oh. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll just slip into something more comfortable. Uh, but, uh, but, Lorna, I... I can only stay a moment. Well, then we'd better not waste time, had we? I, I beg your now, pardon? Now, you just sit over here by me. I'll turn down the lights and get some soft music on the radio. And then... Lorna. Yes? What do you mean, then? Oh, let's not fight this, Mr. Flint. Um, Alan, it's too big for us. Lorna. You, we were meant to pass like ships in the night and then die in the harbor. I'm afraid you're a, a bit ahead of me. It's fate, Alan. Just pure, simple fate. Well, say something. Good night, Laura. I, I really must go. Good night. Is that all you can say? Just good night? I'm afraid so. Mr. Flint, the trouble with you is you don't see enough movies. <laughs> Well, the next day you didn't act like anything had happened, and I was just beginning to wonder if you were going to buy the coat. But all my girlfriends got mink coats when they went out with their bosses, and I couldn't see why you should be the exception. But you were. A week later, I just had to give in and admit that you weren't going to buy me a mink. Lorna, 
What has all this to do with the shortage of funds in the firm's account? You mean you don't understand what I've been trying to tell you? No, not very clearly. But it's so simple. I wanted a mink coat. I used to dream about it at night when I was asleep. And I knew if I didn't get it, I'd, I'd be frustrated. People who don't get what they want are, are, are frustrated, Mr. Flint. They have nightmares and oh. awful things happen. Oh, yes, I see. Well, go ahead, please. Well, the company was making lots of money, and you said yourself the government wouldn't let you keep it, so I decided to take a little each week. Not very much. Oh. I went down and had them put the mink coat away for me and told them in about a year I'd be able to pay for it. They didn't believe me at first, but each week I brought in $100. I would have told you about it, Mr. Flint, but, well, the subject never came up. Lorna, you were stealing that money. That's a terrible thing to say, Mr. Flint. If you don't stop talking like that, I'll quit. You'll quit. Lorna, how much have you... Mr. Flint. How much, Lorna? $5,000. Oh, just a bit more. But... Five thousand? There wasn't any problem about it, Mr. Flint. Not until today. I just marked a hundred a week down to miscellaneous and wrote myself a check. But then you brought in that auditor. Why'd you do that, Mr. Flint? Don't you trust me? You know there's never been any mistake in my bookkeeping. I think bringing in an auditor indicates a certain... A lack of faith, don't you? Lorna, exactly what happened with that auditor? Well, I showed him all my books and answered all his questions, and everything tallied perfectly. There wasn't a single mistake. Now, aren't you proud of me? Not a single mistake. And then, after he was all done, Mr. Jenkins, that was the auditor's name, turned to me and said... Well, Miss Rogers, everything seems to be an A, number one order. Certainly. <laughs> I guess you haven't been taking any of the company funds, though. Certainly not. What kind of a person do you think I am? Uh, now, Miss Rogers, I'm just having my little joke. <laughs> well, I don't think it's very funny. Now, uh, there's just one more item. I know it isn't serious. Uh, this column marked M. Uh, that's for miscellaneous, of course. Yes, miscellaneous. And mink. And mink. What? Well, that's the money I used to pay for my mink coat. You see, I have a separate file here, my mink file. It has all the council checks and receipts, and it's an order. I, uh... Really, Miss Rogers, I, I'm afraid I don't quite understand. Oh, well, I went out with Mr. Flint, and then when he... Oh, 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 yes. Uh, you shouldn't tell me about that. I mean, if Mr. Flint... Uh, well, uh, sometimes employers feel grateful. They do? Uh, now, Miss Rogers, let's not discuss this. It, it has nothing to do with audit. Oh, oh, of course not. And you're a very fortunate girl. I mean, well, it is nice, Mr. Flint, to buy you a fur coat. Oh, he didn't buy it. I did. Uh, certainly, certainly. Of course, I do think you should have taken the initiative... You mean Mr. Flint didn't buy the... He doesn't know about your fur coat? No, I don't think so. He never said anything if he does. But this is really quite serious, Miss Rogers. Yeah, I know. A mink is a very serious matter in a young girl's life. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, well, I think I'd better talk to Mr. Flint. Uh, excuse me, Miss Rogers. Oh, you going to tell him about the coat? I'm afraid I must. Oh, well, I wish you wouldn't. I was going to wear it to work tomorrow as a surprise and show him how much I appreciate uh, I it. I think he'd uh, better be prepared. Uh, for the shark. Well, whatever you say. But don't make him feel too guilty about not having bought one for me. I'm willing to pretend that he did. So, that's all that happened, Mr. Flinton. I don't see why you're so excited. But, but... Lorna, you must understand that you had no oh, right. What difference does that make now? The coat's all paid for. I won't need any more money for it. But, Lorna, Let's I... just forget the whole thing. We've both been wrong, Mr. Flint. And I'll forgive you if you'll forgive me. Forget. Uh, Lorna, I should have put you in jail. What for? For, for borrowing company funds. Well, it's not against the law to borrow money, is it? You didn't borrow it. You... I told what would happen if you call me names? And I meant it. Very well, Lorna. You may keep the coat. Well, of course. It's all paid for. But you'll have to give back every cent of that money. Every penny. I'll take it out of your salary. If you have to work here ten years to make it up. I think it's very petty of That me. will do, Lorna. Now, you may leave now. Oh, uh, one more thing. You'll be given a different job. One that doesn't require so much responsibility. You don't trust me, Mr. Flint. Just say so. You must realize, Lorna, I I'm being very lenient. I suppose. Well, oh, Mr. Flint, could I leave early this afternoon? I want to pick up the coat. Just imagine my own mink coat. 
I'll be able to wear it tonight. Gee, I guess I'm really a very lucky girl. Yes. I would think so. But I always say if you want a thing, you've got to go after it yourself. You can't wait for favors. <laughs> Don't you agree, Mr. Flynn? Oh, uh, yes, Lorna, I agree. I thought you would. <laughs> You think the story is over, don't you? But wait. Fate takes a hand. Wait for the unexpected. And now for the surprising conclusion of The Mink Coat, starring Miss Lorene Tuttle. A Hamilton Whitney production written by Robert Libet and Frank Burt and directed by Frank K. Danzig. Hello? Hello? Is that you, Mr. Flynn? Oh, this is Lorna. I knew you'd be worried about me when I didn't come to work today, but I can't. I'm in the hospital. I don't know what's wrong with me. They're, they're trying to find out. But don't worry about the accounts. I'll get caught up just as soon as I'm feeling better. Oh, the doctor's coming in now. i got to hang up. Goodbye, Mr. Flynn. Good morning, Miss Rogers. Feeling better? I guess so. Well, we found the cause of your trouble. What is it, doctor? You're allergic to mink, Miss Rogers. Have to get rid of that coat. Never be able to wear it again. You're allergic to mink. The Mink Coat starred Lorene Tuttle. Listen soon for another of your favorite motion picture stars in a drama of The Unexpected. This program was transcribed in Hollywood.